This is one of Melbourne's first ever trams. Note the excellent ventilation, cosy ambience and the possible odd waft of manure. The first horse tramway was built in 1884 in Fairfield to drive up land sales and give the impression it was a well-serviced area. Before the horse tram, there'd been a horse bus service, but the tram got the people's boat. They just couldn't go past the lovely smooth rails that ironed out the bumps of our early roads. This horse tram ran in Sorrento in the off season and the rest of the time, people traveled between the front and back beaches by steam tram. New South Wales had steam trams, but they didn't take off in Victoria. But back to the horse trams, this is an early Coburg tram. In 1889, the Northern Tramway Company opened a single track route along Sydney Road. It ran until 1915, and this photo of Sydney Road, looking south from Bell Street, captures the horse-drawn tram rails being replaced to prepare for the first electric tram, which came in the following year. One of the busiest horse tram routes of Melbourne ran to Burundara Cemetery and a double track horse tramway opened in 1890 to take visitors right up to the main gates of Melbourne Zoo. Many of the early horse tram services were financially unsustainable and eventually they were replaced by cable and electric trams, which don't need feeding and don't usually leave a trail of themselves in their wake. In 1877, Francis Boardman Clapp of the Melbourne Omnibus Company bought the Victorian patents of Andrew Halliday's Cable Street Tramway design and introduced cable-operated trams to Melbourne. The last Metropolitan Horse Tram service stopped running in 1916 and 50 of the retired horses were offered for sale here at Kirk's Bazaar in the CBD. The Melbourne Cable Tram Network went on to become the largest integrated system of its type in the world. Who knew that cable trams and electric trams would have more horsepower than actual horses?